All right, so welcome back into another Dragon Ball Super Card Game video. This one is going to be about Lord Slug and all of the updates that Dropbox 6 came out with uh, for him. And it's going to be mainly focusing on the new yellow stuff and some of the, the old green stuff. And it's kind of a culmination of both. I'm very interested in seeing other people's lists as well. I've been playing this for a few weeks now um, as I catch up on older decks and just decks that I just need to get out before the expansion comes out and hopefully get some gameplay for it as well. But uh, again, this is more of a aggressive hand destruction. Um, a lot of playing 15k to 20k bodies as well um, and just starving the opponent's hand. And the only thing about this deck, which I'll get into a little bit later, is the fact that you don't really have a huge hand and there's some budget constraints as far as this deck too. But if you like it, let me know in the comments below. Like, dislike, all that other stuff because I am trying to have a deck profile every couple of days uh, throughout the next few weeks as well as I catch up. And of course, let me know what you think or what, what other decks you wanna see. All right, so let's talk about just the purpose of the deck. And it really comes down to two of these cards or these two cards, just as I should say. Uh, it's a three drop Lord Slug Super Namekian and then the Lord Slug Evil Invader uh, one drop. So both of these are pretty much the boost that Slug kind of needed when it comes to yellow. It sucks that, you know, these aren't re uh, green cards, but I mean, I guess I, I really don't know what they're, they were thinking, but either way, it's fine. I think what's cool about this, well, let me explain the cards first. Uh, the three drop has unique barrier, and basically, as long as you have bond two, uh, especially with that barrier, is just wild, and you can get this on turn two, it's just wild, um, uh, the opponent can't add any cards from their deck to the hand. That means searching with, uh, like, Kid Ku, that means super combos in their hand, that means uh, drawing with their unisons, that means anything from their battle cards getting different cards from their deck, and etc. And that's huge. That is absolutely huge. And getting this thing out turn two, just letting it there with another thing that maybe has barrier, i.e. wings, <laughs> um, it's really, really effective. And that is something that people really need to watch out for when playing against a this type of deck. Other part of this that makes this so good is the activate main, which is basically paying one yellow um, and if your leader card is yellow or slugs army, which means the slug leader or really any yellow leader, which I've been brewing other yellow leader decks for this card, um, you discard this card from your hand, play up to one slugs army card with your energy cost of one in your deck and then shuffle your, your, your deck. So the cool thing about this is that it doesn't add from your hand. So paying one in order to add something to your hand is not that great, but paying one in order to pay the same amount from your, your hand, from your deck, that thins, thins out your deck, surges your deck, let, lets you look through it, and gives you a good amount of range for this, which now it's, you know, like a couple cards, but still really two good cards. <laughs> it's really good and you get to play it. So that goes into the Lord Slug Evil Invader and once you play this card, you draw one, and then the activate main is that you choose up to one Slug Zombie with energy cost of three or less from your hand and play it, which could be itself, which doesn't restrict it from itself. I don't know why you would, but you can go into this lower slug or the Angela targets that we're gonna take a look at in a second, which both of these things are super, super huge and including the other three drop AOD slug. Um, that's kind of the whole play here. And of course I'll get through the plays for that as well. But the other part of it is that you choose your opponent's battle card and switch to rest mode. Never really used it, especially paying one yellow. It's, it's kind of not that great. Um, and uh, yeah. At least it doesn't go into the drop area. Uh, the other part of this is the other two new cards. I'm gonna make these kind of short because they're they're not as impactful, but they are targets and they are kind of cool. Um, and Angela here is actually really cool in certain matchups where they end up tapping out pretty early and they can't really use their energy or they have to make a, de a, a decision where their leader can't swing or a battle card can't swing. And this is interesting. So it has a unique, critical, it can be played out with that one drop slug. You can be played for two energy, two yellow energy, unfortunately, with the wings on board. And it can be played out with the four drop slug and as well as the three drop slug. So all of these things can be played out with this guy. You know, you have to pay those two yellow energy, which is crazy. Um, the other thing is that it has bond, bond two. So you have this guy and the other three drop. That's kind of the whole thing about it. You deny their cards from deck to hand, and then you also deny their, their rest mode cards. So um, if your opponent has four more cards in rest mode, which is pretty important, it's kind of hard to kind of 
have that every single turn, nah, whatever. Your opponent chooses two cards in Rest Belt. That can be their leader, bottle card, whatever it may be. And they can't be switched to active mode no matter what uh, until they're the start of the next turn. The only thing that gets around this technically is if their leader awakens because it's technically a new card and they can switch to active mode if they have some sort of thing that switched to active mode if it's in rest mode. I guess either way really cool for energy locking and as well as just preventing any attacks which is nice this is a nice good control uh, aspect the other thing is this lord slug uh youth regained is that it's a double striker successor for one green yellow or green energy which is nice just to have a a, a one energy double striker that after your uh, Angela or the other Angela attacks you just a successor for one and then you swing for 25k double strike I think I I put this guy a little bit lower than I want, I want to because of the bond three in which you can choose up to one part of cards in the opponent's hand if your leader card is green uh, Or you can go ahead and choose one of the battle cards and rest them on KO it So usually you're just gonna go for the hand thing I mean bond three is kind of hard even in this deck to keep up especially when you successor so yeah all right, here's a full list. I'm sure you wanted to see it. Uh, there's a lot to kind of unpack because it's kind of like all over the place. Here's the deal. <laughs> I'm gonna go through all the plays and things like that, but as far as a, a quick breakdown for everything, not even Scratch is nice as a one of because you are playing two colors and it's nice to have just a, a regular um, a regular negate that you can just use later on. Plus you can pitch it with your leader effect. If it's a dead card on your turn, you're trying to go for game, you want that extra energy, you have nothing else to use for it. Um, and then, you know, just overall pretty nice and generic. Dark Temptation Toa is probably going to be used like turn two or turn three. You got to realize that we're playing Assimilate in order to get the things like um, the one drop slug and as well as our super combo, which is just one in the in the drop area. And I'm sure there's other targets, but yeah, don't worry about that. Um, and then we have the one drop slug and as well as the three drop slug, both of them are two, two more cards into the drop area after you use their effects. So you're gonna be using Toa pretty soon. And I think two is the right number right now. I don't like it at three. I think you should probably fit in another Overrealm if you're gonna be uh, putting another black card. Um, again, the making Duos says uh, Sonol, or whatever it is, with the split of Paragus is just because of Assimilate, just more targets. And Simulate, if you have no more targets, just becomes yellow energy. So that's another thing to kind of consider. This is a one of because, yes, this guy evolves on top of the four drop slug and as well as the six drop slug. So, I mean, he has his merits. They're both double striker 25Ks, but this guy pitch, it makes them pitch three. So, I mean, you could swing with this, make him pitch one, and then swing with this guy and make, or evolve on top of this guy and make him pitch three more. So, you know. But you still need the bonds for both of them, so just keep that in mind. Um, Lord Slug Young again is just still really, really good. It's really hard to get rid of, or at least like give up um, a three drop Angela that makes him makes him pitch a card after you swing for critical 15k. It makes it's really hard to get rid of or a free play of um, the three drop Lord Slug to make them pitch a card, or the three drop here as far as to get another target, or if it dies somehow, you get another target. And you can get that on the board and now you have bond two and swing with it now they can't add anything the three job is another target for that as well um so those are the things that that i, I kind of like some people cut this and i understand that uh because of counterplays but at the same time it's just so good when you already you know windowed down their hand and they're most likely not going to be pitching another card just for a counterplay and if they do then that's okay the thing about this is that if i removed wings i would probably remove uh the lord slug and as well as a six drop um, and that's pretty much it, honestly. But I would probably take out all of that. Uh, the loyal, the free blocker is nice just to get your, you that bond, and is also really nice just to block <laughs> like it's a free blocker. Sacrifice is really good for early awakening, and as well as just a free negate pretty much at any time. Um, it's just nice. It's just honestly really nice. Just I think it's really underrated for these specific type of leaders like like the Manichians where they have access to these type of things. And uh, it, this has helped quite a lot for early game aggression and as well as just having uh, that extra green negate, which is pretty, um, pretty it's, it's a balancing act for that throughout the whole deck, I would say. And then the three drop slug plays out this this guy, this guy, and the other Angela. It's just really good F4. Um, this is pretty much your turn to play, which we'll get into. Zarbon is really good for a pitch and then making a free blocker that makes them pitch again. 
<laughs> it's just really good. Salzeno is pretty much the de facto SER. If you don't have it, it's okay. But I've ended games with that um, a little bit later into the game, especially if it's a little bit grindy. So there you go. Uh, Ape, this is another budget sort of like um, ceiling in which, you know, it like, I don't know if it's, like this is probably the best yellow type of energy and as well as choice that you can give yourself uh, when it comes to generic choices and just helping you as as for any deck really. And because you get to pitch it and then just you know pay two to draw two, that's really effective. If especially if you don't have any other plays or if you're playing around in the gates or not in the gates but counter plays etc. And uh, that's pretty much it. The chomp is just a one of just a. Just to have double strike. Now let's talk about sequencing. And I, I, if you have any questions about the, the the full list, just let me know in the comments below. I'll, I'll be happy to answer that one if I didn't answer already. Uh, so turn one, you're going to be playing this guy, and not obviously playing for three, but pitching it and playing out the Lord Slug, and then assimilate to play out the Lord Slug. So you have like, I don't know, what, 12 copies to play something <laughs> on turn one. You're going to want to charge your yellow. And the, the issue with this deck as well, if you take a look at the previous um, list is that the yellow count is pretty low for what it is. If you added maybe a couple yellow, like two or three yellow maybe, it might be a little bit better, but you don't want to get heavy on either side. And I think green is better, so that way you can play that four drop um, slug on turn three or two, or three or four. So that's my thing, is you want, you want the two green energy. Anyway, turn two, you play, uh, you use the effect of uh, this guy to play out this guy, make them pitch a card, and then use this guy to play this guy, and um, uh, use the uh, the green effect or green energy effect. And by that, by this time, you're getting close to awakening. Um, but like I said, you're going to be using all these guys in order to get tar tem Dark Temptation Toa. So that's three cards right there, swinging for 15k critical for leader, 20k uh, 20k body for the Lord Slug, and then the um, and Gilo for 15k critical with a 15k body on uh, Toa. So that turn two is pretty massive, and that's really where you want to have um, some, you know, I was going to say temptation, but uh, momentum. There you go. <laughs> that's where you start your momentum. And then turn three, you play another Angula, either wings, and then you set up to your turn four, which is Lord Slug, or the six drop as well. Zarbon is really good as far as a, an option to be defensive. You can play an ape, draw the two, etc. And by this time, you're going to have um, these guys on board. The only downside for Cell Zeno is that you can't successor with the six drop cell. So this guy gets sent to the warp instead of the drop as soon as it leaves the field. So things like the um, the cell or the four drop uh, Lord Slug or this six drop here are going to be better targets for that or um, basically four targets which you will get, honestly, you will get those four targets. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy are all pretty much one energy or for free with a four drop uh, Lord Slug and those are going to be your targets for Cell Zeno. So that's kind of how you end the game if you don't already, basically starving their hand, only swinging with critical and swinging your, your 20k, 15k bodies that don't have critical at their battle cards or their unitons. Um, what gives this deck kind of a, a kind of a, a rough time are things that remove quite a lot and maybe even counterplays such as uh, Frieza, the uh, the five drop Frieza or seven drop, whatever the, the drop <laughs> Frieza is. Trunks is a little bit annoying as well, but honestly, because you're paying so, uh, so many things for cheaper for free, you basically have to bite the bullet and then just play something else for free or wait them out just a little bit. Um, there's a thing, there's some things uh, and that kind of brings me to this where there's cards to consider in which, you know, things like Dormant Potential Unleashed and Rebrand are really good, but you have to kind of consider uh, the viability when it comes to this type of deck it really has to you like you have to really think about what you want to commit to i'm committing to making sure my turn one plays are yellow my later turns are green and i get to starve their hand and swing with critical and as well as can uh, make some consistency with the assimilate and stuff like that but if you want to get on more of the green side and have a small yellow package then these things are going to be a little bit better but they're going to take up a lot and have uh, more of a sacrifice when it comes to being green heavy. So like Rebrian is really good, but you have to pay two green for it and you have to be a little more consistent for that. Don't worry, potential is awesome, but you're already negging your hand and you're playing out your hand. Your, your hand is very small as it is and is really, really only effective when you have a... Um, and unison on board and same thing for uh frieza like you're gonna be having these cars and they'd be really good but honestly i i feel like they're you have to build around those things and i i feel like you have to be really good at something instead of trying to cover all all things right 
And I think the only thing about this deck is that you don't have really that much removal. So that's another thing that you have to kind of think of. Um, I'm more of the aggression. I'm more of like tripping their hand away and they swing at me something with, with the with their battle cards. I'm just going to swing right back at it <laughs> and then just deny them cards and not make them take life. So that's just my thing. Um, and that's kind of where Dark Broly comes in as well. If you have that three green energy, then, you know, Dark Broly is going to be great. Lord Slug is not that great for energy management. So I don't really like tapping down three for him, but he does give you quite a lot. So Dormant Potential and as well as Frieza kind of opens right back up for that. Um, the two drop slug is actually not bad because you can play again as another target for assimilate and as another target for the one drop slug. You pay that one yellow, you play it out, you get any Lord Sl or slug army, including the four drop that you play. So I didn't really want to commit to this because mm, even paying two or one for 10k that you know, gets you one card to your hand is just not that great. I could be wrong. I could have to test that. Another alternative to the SCR is going to be the Ape, which is great for, again, removal, and as well as just that surprise factor. Uh, you just have to pitch it after you combo with it, and you KO anything that does or doesn't have barrier and can be removed from their um, their field as a battle card. And then lastly, Hellas and Sawar, I think, the Universe 2 uh, check land or warp land, I guess. Uh, is really really good because you're going to be p pitching things like these things and as well as your yellow or your green cards and you can just use it as a multicolor energy make your energy a little bit more consistent i just didn't find the room for it they're activate main pay two and then pay two for that it's not that great it is a 16k which is, makes it a little bit awkward for them to swing into it but i just realized that i was blocking that and as well as the previous thing but uh you kind of get the idea right <laughs> this is what i get for having a new a new setup and and trying something new either way this is the 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 sequencing from before and this is what the cards before consideration is for as well but leaving on that this is it uh let me know in the thoughts below i think i've rambled enough enough off enough. I really love Lord Slug as a leader. I've always liked the archetype. I've always liked hand destruction and I've all, I'm always going to come back to it. Um, but yeah, let me know, post your builds below. Let me know what other decks you want to see. Um, and that's it. I'll see you in the next one.